Hello everyone. Today we will continue to look at the Red Hat System Administrative Certification Question Bank. Next, let's look at question six. The main content of question six is about creation. Directories. Ah, but it's not an ordinary directory. To be precise, it requires creating a collaborative mode. The meaning of a collaborative directory is actually what? It means it's not managed by a single user. Instead, it can have multiple users, right? We can manage such a directory simultaneously. So what is the main purpose of creating a collaborative directory? First of all, the first requirement of the question is, after creating the directory, what is the purpose? The owner of it should be the group from question four. Ah, in question four, we created three users in one group. At that time, we added two of the users. These two entities were added to our group. The collaborative directory to be created here is to have this group as the owner of the directory. Ah, because in terms of permissions here, there are actually two managers. The first is the owner, and the second is the group it belongs to. If it's a group, then only the part belonging to the group can manage it, which means this group can manage this directory. Ah, what needs attention here is during the creation. Ensure that the aforementioned two users must be within the group. Ah, this is the issue of the fourth question. Then, when specifying the group name during creation, it must not be written incorrectly. Next, it's about setting this group as a manager of the directory. Here, we need to use a permission management command, which is our permission management command. So the first step, if you're doing the sixth question, by the way, you can verify if the previous steps were correct. How to do it? First, you need to confirm whether the group exists. Yes, confirm whether the group exists if it does not exist. Go back and redo the fourth question and check it again. Ah, you must ensure that your group exists. Here, regarding the question, it definitely hasn't been created because this group is done in the fourth question, the first time we created it ourselves. If you made a mistake in the fourth question, then the sixth question is also gone. Ah, it's the same. There is a connection between the steps, so you must be careful. So how can you confirm the existence of the group? There are, of course, many methods. Ah, you can even use our command to create the group again, and that's fine. Ah, because why? If there are some issues, when you use the command to create a group, for example, ha, huh? normally we create a group like this, right? If we want to create this group, if it reports this error, then it's a good thing because it means our group already exists. Okay, then our fourth question, that group must have been successfully created. This is for you. If you want to prevent any issues just in case, you can perform this operation first. Ensure the group exists and then proceed. If you directly enter the command and your group doesn't exist, or you have written the group name incorrectly, then this question won't exist. So you must pay attention here. The first step is to confirm that your group exists properly. That's the first step. What's the second step? The task is to create this collaboration directory, which is essentially just a directory that doesn't exist yet. So the next step is to create what? Create the group. Create this. The directory needed by the main group. Ah, this is a group we created according to the requirements of the task. So, can we just create the group directly like this? Specifically this. But there's nothing else to pay attention to. We don't need any options for creating the organization, right? Because the home directory in front of us definitely exists, so there's no need to add options. It's the mkdir command. What is it? It's just that if, for example, both directories do not exist, we might need to add a p option. If both of them exist, we don't need to add any options. So if home exists, then you don't need to add options for the latter. Just press enter directly. Because home is the default directory of our system. 
Okay, after creating it, e the next step. What does the task require? This directory should be readable, writable, and accessible by members of our group. But other users are not allowed to have these permissions. Of course, the root user has the right to access these contents. Don't be fooled by the fact that the question only has one sentence, you know? It actually contains a lot of information. Also, keep in mind that if the question remains unchanged, you can directly follow the steps from our question bank. This part is relatively simple. However, if the question changes, you must observe carefully and read it thoroughly. In this case, if its language changes slightly, the result of the question will be different, meaning the commands we need to write will also be different. Uh, why is it said to be three parts here? First, the first part can be read, written, and accessed by our main members. The second part is not allowed for other users. The third part is allowed for the root user, the administrator. What it actually shows us is this thing. Normally, we access this through iOS commands to view. The information includes the issue of permissions, right? What the question stem represents is actually these nine letters, or you could say numbers, it's the same. These nine letters unite because they respectively mention administrator, user, and others, it represents these nine permissions. So when you write it, it actually means this sentence, which actually represents what follows. When changing permissions, there is a number or letter, and there are two ways to write it, here, you can change it. You can write it using numbers, or you can use letters. Again, our solutions are not limited to one. All problems can be solved in more than one way. You can use numbers or letters, depending on your preference. In the question bank, we use the method of directly using numbers, which is slightly shorter than using letters, making the command a bit shorter. Of course, using letters is also fine. There's no problem with that. There are a total of nine permissions which you need to pay attention to. And then it requires us to do this. We just created this directory. Let's take a look at the status of this directory now. We can use what to check. Just check home. Under home, we can see there are many users, right? There are many users. The most important thing is this. Which directory did we just create? The directory was just created under home. This one right here. You can see that it already has some permissions. It already has default permissions. The default permissions are actually 755. This is because our system's default permissions are 755v, but the requirement in our task is not 755. So here we need to add or modify the permissions. Uh, the first requirement is not a problem, right? The task requires the administrator to have full permissions, which is fine. The second requirement is for our group, which is also to read, write, and access. Access means the third permission, reading is the first, the second is. Actually, this is reading writing, and accessing. There are three in total. So according to the task requirements, our group also has full permissions. So it should be seven and seven. The first two are both seven. So what is the third one? Other users, they do not have these permissions. So how many do they have? It's zero. Ah, the 421 here represents our read, write, and access respectively. Everyone must remember this to prevent any changes in the task requirements. You should be able to calculate it yourself. 4 represents read, 2 represents write, and 1 represents access. Adding them up gives a complete permission. The 7 I mentioned earlier is actually 4 plus 2 plus 1. If there are no permissions at all, then it is 0. So, the number needed for this problem is 770.
which is represented by numbers. If represented by letters, there is another way to write it. Here, it is divided into two types, and I will demonstrate both for everyone later. If you want to use letters, use letters. If you want to use numbers, use numbers. Of course, there is also a small issue, which is that our problem requires our newly created group to have ownership. It should have group ownership, but currently it is root, which is incorrect. So we need to change it first. There are actually two methods to change it here. Both the change order command and the change group command can be used. Okay. The change owner command can modify what? It can change our so-called owning group. Here, our group is the one we just created, right? The group we just created. Regarding under the home directory. Uh, we summarize it as this. This is one way to write it. You can see here that it has already changed with this change owner. Another way is to use the group. Does group mean the main one? This method is also feasible. We can see that after the change, there is no problem. Both methods are fine, just remember one of them. With change owner, it can change both the owner and the group. However, change group can only change the group. But for this question, it definitely involves changing the group. No matter how the question changes, it won't change to altering the owner, unless the question is completely new. Then this. The likelihood is low, the chance of a complete overhaul is low. Generally, it just involves changing parameters. So basically, you can use change group for this. But if by any chance, it changes to require a new owner, you can use change owner. With change owner, you can change both the owner and the group. Before the colon is the owner, and after the colon is the group, you can change it like this. Permissions. The command used is change mode. After change, modify, add. The directory just now, uh, here you find it's different from what I just said, right? I just mentioned 7702, who is that? Second, is the third requirement of our question. Under the current manager directory, all files created will have their group ownership automatically set to the group name we just created. This is the second permission, which is a type of special permission. This is generally not used very often. However, if this topic is tested, you need to understand it. The two here means the function of two is that when we create new files or directories in the current directory, it will automatically set the group ownership to the group of the current directory, which means using this directory's group. So here it is, two. Ah, this is the most convenient method, and it's enough for you to remember this way if you add or subtract. Using these letters is also possible, but it's actually not worth the effort. If you think it's necessary, there's no need to write so much. So here, we can just use numbers, and there's no need to change it with letters. Changing with letters is actually a bit troublesome. It's a bit troublesome. But if the permissions required by the question change, everyone can calculate it themselves. 421. Just combine these three numbers, in, and that's the situation for this question. Then here, we just press enter. Check, this can be checked. This question can be checked using the method we just mentioned. As long as the final result is like this, as long as the question remains unchanged, ensure your result is. Like this, note that this is correct here. This is our previous second permission. Then, here is the root administrator, and this is the name after the group we created. Make sure there are no issues. With this line, we can check whether our answer to this question is correct. As long as the result is like this, then this question is a full score. This is our sixth question. If you need the complete question bank, you can leave a comment below and purchase the most stable question bank at the highest price. That's it for today. Everyone, goodbye.